Greetings comrades, my name is Jake Antles, and this is my first lecture. As you may remember, I uh, previously mentioned that I would be recording episodes of a lecture, not of an idea I had, about global warming, and I decided that I would make a presentation about it, and uh, split it up into three episodes, so I could go into as much detail as I needed about them, and I'd put it up on YouTube to educate you, to educate people who are interested. So. This this uh this presentation is about global warming. It was a uh, well I'm I'm narrating this and I would spy this. In fact, I talked to my friend. Some of you will probably know uh, Mr. R W as he goes by now. You may know him by another name, which I cannot mention because he is currently on the run from the Illuminati and wishes that all evidence of his name that you may know him as is gone. So unfortunately. I can't mention him by his name, so for now you'll, refer, you'll hear me refer to him as RW. I went to him, and I told him about my idea, and he put this whole presentation together, and I who and I wish him luck from running from the Illuminati. Like this presentation will be in like the style of um, it'll go in depth as you could get in a university lecture or an A or college lecture. And it'll cover A level topics from this country, like carbon cycle and the water cycles and some hazards and global cooling and stuff uh, and we are going to the next thing the first thing is that this is a this is going to be divided into three episodes episode one the carbon cycle why is important episode two the chronology of global warming and global cooling and episode three which is a sad truth about global warming and so this episode we're going to do we're going to start with the carbon cycle and why it's important and it is important plus for those of you who um, are studying this country I'm not sure what it's like on the other side of the Atlantic or any of the other countries that people watch my videos from. But on this side of the Atlantic, the, um, the carbon cycle is covered in school, so if you need to revise or anything, you can watch this video, and you can, because it, pretty much it covers the same thing. It covers the basic principles of it and several of the different spheres and things that carbon is, in, is transferred to and in. Yeah. Oh yeah, and um, in case any of you are worrying about the, the validity of my, so of my results, you know, the data I'm handing you, I'm reading, I'm using, don't worry about it, cross-check them with multiple sites, other than Wikipedia, he went on to different sites like the, again, all those like national sites about uh, the National American, the Meteorology Association or whatever, or the National American, he goes in, he went into all of these websites and cross checked them, made sure everything was okay. And due to a copyright reason, now we haven't been able to release these videos recently because, um, because a bunch of the pictures we used were copyrighted, so we had to go through and change them. Yes, yeah, so, so the problem, the one problem is that the statistics may vary slightly, but well, there's nothing we can really do about that because no, no one is entirely accurate with this. For example, like the law of prehistoric evidence is quite hard because a uh, ge geological scale covers millions of years, not thousands or decades, and so it's quite hard to pinpoint it exactly. But they've gone as as accurate as they can, and this is how accurate it can be. So first of all. The carbon cycle and why it's important. So we're going to be covering what the carbon cycle is, how important the carbon cycle is, and what does global warming have to do with it. So the carbon cycle is the process of how carbon is transferred between different stores and sources across the planet. A carbon store is it takes in more carbon dioxide and releases it, and the carbon source is it releases more carbon than it takes in. The carbon spheres are different environments that carbon is stored in. The spheres are the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, the pedosphere, the biosphere, the atmosphere, and the cryosphere. The hydrosphere stores carbon in the form of dissolved carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in the form of carbonic acid, either in a heavy amount, either in large amounts near the surface of the ocean where it's in contact with the atmosphere, or in, uh, or, in, or in larger quantities in the deep seabed, where it's uh, then transferred to the sediments and stuff in the seabed becoming the reactive sediments. Which is why um, if you take rocks from the bottom of the sea, they, contain, they can contain a lot of, they can contain carbonic acid quite a lot, large amount of it, because it's just, it keeps, it's, the ocean is a brilliant store of carbon dioxide. And the, and the other way is that organisms live in the ocean because of all carbon-based life forms. The lithosphere, the lithosphere is the top 100 kilometers or so, so of the planet's surface, which is basically, as they try to highlight, it was quite hard to point out, but it's basically the crust and the small layer, and the, the lithosphere in terms of Maybe the planet is actually the thin line you see underneath the crust, the thin grey line, the thin grey area, 
but it's Countess Power of the Crust because it's this is here's meant to be the, like the deep deep down, which because the uh, continental crust is thicker than oceanic crust, it, that's included as the lithosphere as well. And carbon is stored in forms of fossil fuels and calcium carbonate, which is similar to what we covered when the ocean with carbonic acid. And Pelisphere stores carbon in calcium carbonate as well, which is why sometimes in countries their bedrock is limestone, because it's the same thing. And in deceased organic matter, which one day may eventually become fossil fuels due to compression and heat. The biosphere stores carbonic acid in the fact that because the biosphere is it's everything that's alive, which means that every everything that's every living creature has a, every living creature is a store of carbon dioxide. Because carbon dioxide is a major component of the oxyribonucleic acid or DNA and ribonucleic acid, RNA. In these pictures here, as you can see the rungs, I'm gonna get my mouse to help you. See. Each of these rungs is made out of a molecule like this. You have a phosphate group, you have a riba, you have a pentose sugar, and then you have a nucleotide. This one is thymine. And and just to show and this is a deoxyribose and ribose, which make up these these chains. The deoxyribose, every black circle you see here is an is a carbon atom. And those all make up this the deoxyribose sugar, which is then used to help create the backbone or DNA. The same thing for with ribose, except that it has a except the ribose has an extra atom here, which deoxyribose doesn't. But even then, it still forms and it, it still helps form the backbone of RNA. And that means that because they're both sugars, the pentose sugars, they need carbon they need carbon to form. So Every single part about you, your your very DNA itself, is made out of carbon, and that's why it is so important. It is like is the very component of our existence. If carbon didn't exist, we wouldn't exist either. The atmosphere stores carbon in the form of carbon dioxide, carbon particulates, soot, and methane. Because if if others you know that the chemical name for methane is CH4, which is carbon dioxide, which is carbon, which is carbon atoms surrounded by four hydrogen atoms. The cryosphere stores carbon in methane, carbon dioxide, and deceased organic matter, but it's currently frozen and preserved, which means that it's the rate of decay has stopped because it is so cold the bacteria cannot separate them. It's too low for the metabolic rate to work and they can't break it down. There's a lot of carbon stored in the earth. The atmosphere stores alone 750 gigatons, biosphere stores 610 gigatons, pedosphere stores 1,600 gigatons, or 1.6 petatons, the cryosphere stores 1.4 petatons, the lithosphere stores 100,000 petatons, and that a lot of that is just car is just in fossil fuels, because it is so rich in carbon. The hydrosphere stores a lot of carbon as well, 38,370 gigatons, so in total we have almost one po we also have 150 petatons of carbon stored in the planet. And that's just the surface. We're not even talking about the carbon that is stored in the mantle itself, in the form of carbon-rich rocks, diamonds. You may be wondering why it's carbon that's important. And that's because carbon is an atom, as you can see here. It has, for those of you that don't know, this is the atomic structure for the electronic structure of carbon. You have the rule of only two only two electrons on the inside on the inside shell, and then it has four on the outside shell, which means that it can form four bonds, four covalent bonds with any other with any other atom. And this means that it's good it's good for bonding with oxygen and hydrogen, which is also essential for our survival. And it's quite it's quite light compared to the other elements. So any other elements that have four electrons in the outer shell. Is that they use they're way too heavy for it to work. Carbon can be manipulated easily by enzymes to form amino acids, which are the building blocks of life, as well. The carbon cycle is important because the basis of the of every food chain starts with the plant life, the producer. Because plant life, plants photosynthesize from the sun, and so by trapping light inside there with the chlorophyll in the chloroplast, they use that to separate hydrogen ions. Which they then use to create you know, glucose and water, you know, glucose and oxygen, and with car car and 
but the thing they all need for that is that they need carbon dioxide to do that. If carbon dioxide wasn't entering the atmosphere, there would be no carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because carbon dioxide is a gas, which means that it wouldn't be in the atmosphere itself. So if plants wouldn't be able to photosynthesize, they would die because every single plant is photosynthesized. If they didn't photosynthesize, they cannot move. That's the difference between plants and animals. Animals move to find food. Plants can't, which is why they need to photosynthesize. They produce their own food on the spot and consume it. If they can't produce their own food, they'll die. Herbivores would have nothing to eat and die. Carnivores would have nothing to eat and die. And all the oxygen used up, and all the oxygen on the earth would have been used up, because there's actually only a very small amount of oxygen. You know, I mean, there's a ton of oxygen in the atmosphere right now. It's just, it's more like 21%. But every time we breathe out, plants recycle the carbon dioxide into the, they break it down and they release oxygen, right? And if they weren't, photosynthes if they weren't photosynthesizing, then the oxygen would be replenished and life would die. And life as we know it would die. And what is, what does global warming have to do with this? Global warming is the gradual increase in global temperatures due to the changing components of the atmosphere, which means that certain gases like methane, carbon dioxide, and water vapor, or dihydrogen monoxide, uh, their amount, the amount of them, be, their volume in the carbon in the atmosphere is increasing steadily, which is a natural. I mean, they, they make up trace gas. If you looked at a, any, if you looked at any uh, pie chart that shows how much gas there is in the atmosphere, there will be there will be nitrogen, like seventy nine, will be seventy nine percent, and it will be seventy eight point five percent, and carbon and oxygen will be twenty one percent. And then the 0.5% left over, that would be, all, all of it would be just trace gases, which includes carbon dioxide, methane, argon, and water vapor. But these are increasing in number, and this, because of their increasing in number, it's still quite dangerous. Because infrared, heat, infrared radiation, which is heat from the sun, passes through the atmosphere, and some of, it is, some of it is absorbed by the Earth, and the rest is reflected back into space. But the greenhouse gases, they're good at reflecting or absorbing that heat and retaining it. And so what happens is, like a one-way mirror, you could say, you could call it a one-way mirror. The, the the light, this heat cannot, the the heat cannot, not all the heat is reflected back into space, and it's building up in here. Like you're putting on several layers of coat, and it's starting to your body temperature is starting to reach multiple level. That's what that's what greenhouse gases are doing. And over time, this this warming this is warming the earth. And the carbon cycle has a lot, has everything to do with global warming, because global warming is an out of control transfer of carbon into the atmosphere. Because it, the rate the carbon is entering the atmosphere is faster than the rate of carbon leaving the atmosphere. And something you'll know about nature is that nature works in equilibrium. Both sides must be equal. If one side increases, the other side must decrease. If one side decreases, the other side must decrease. But what ha what's happening now is that because the rate of carbon entering the atmosphere is increasing, we would think that the rate of carbon uh, carbon leaving the atmosphere would be increasing too. But because of human activity, it's not. It's, it's, just, it's just remaining there or even reducing slightly. Which means that the equilibrium in nature is unbalanced and that that's not a good thing. It's not natural and it's dangerous. Now, atmospheric... Yeah, sorry about the red font. It was quite to see it in any of the font. Atmospheric, atmospheric carbon inputs. These are the way the so the ways that carbon dioxide enters carbon enters the atmosphere. Uh, the process of releasing energy via respiration in organisms produces water and carbon dioxide. Oxid, although uh, the ocean can take in carbon uh, carbon dioxide, you know, absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and store it, it also releases carbon dioxide back out. And especially if it's by the surface, it'll be a constant cycle of joining of leaving leaving the ocean into the atmosphere and leaving the atmosphere into the ocean. In decomposition, the process is a, the process is where microorganisms organisms break down organic matter via respiration, which is just like which is just like respiration itself, and it releases carbon dioxide. Combustion, the combustion of once organic matter combusting with oxygen in the air, releasing carbon particulates to carbon dioxide, unless it's wood because that that's still organic. However, even even wood burning wood and burning oil does the same thing. I mean, the oil may smell even worse than the wood. But they're both formed from organic components, which is why it's it's releasing carbon. It's releasing carbon. The volcanic activity. 
which is it's a constant process, but it normally it's uh, handled quite easily by nature. The where gas is from below the crust rise and build up pressure on the weak points of the earth crust, which uh, you know, and then eventually when this pressure gets too much, it creates it releases an explosion and pumps gases and ash into the air. So, and not only that, but it you know the gases releases like dihydrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide and sulfur, the cryospheric thawage, which is basically um the ice caps are melting. Which means that carbon dioxide that the, and methane that they have st uh, trapped in bubbles in the ice is slowly being released over time. And not only that, but there's also like frozen plants and animals inside the ice. And then they start decaying. And then you just have loads of extra atmosphere, loads of extra carbon entering the atmosphere. Now the uh, now the outputs are photosynthesis, the uh, where the plants uh, produce oxygen, glucose from water and carbon dioxide in the, in the atmosphere. And the ocean atmospheric exchange, in which carbon dioxide is diffused into the ocean and becomes carbonic acid. As you can see, there's a big difference between all the inputs and outputs. That's because these two inputs, especially photosynthesis, are huge. They are on an immense scale. And the problem is that nowadays combustion is uh, it's getting quite large as well. It's slowly becoming harder for change to handle that. The transfers between the carbon spheres are photosynthesis 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 and it gets it gets hard after you say it over and over again photosynthesis it transfers uh, 123 gigatons a year respiration 120 gigatons a year combustion 9 gigatons a year ocean atmospheric exchange input 92 gigatons a year output 90 gigatons a year so there's a 2 gigaton a year input into the ocean overall storage Volcan normal volcanic activity, excluding supervolcanic and VEI-6, which is very, very big eruptions, including VEI-7, which are just affect the whole planet that's very powerful. 0 0.1 gigatons. And the cryosphere thawage, which is uh, 0 0.5 gigatons a year. However, with all the methane and the and the, you know the, all the but and all the peat, the frozen peat and tundra and stuff up north, they're on the verge of being released, there are 50 gigatons. Of carbon on the verge of being released, which isn't a good thing. So the total atmospheric input output is 215 gigatons a year, and total at atmospheric input is 222.6 gigatons a year. So the atmospheric carbon net, net uptake is 7.6 gigatons annually. And that's why global warming is happening. It's because that there is this 7.6 gigatons a year entering the atmosphere. So this this is the end of the episode now. And next, so we've, but what, just to briefly summarize everything we've done, we've, we've looked at the cause of global warming, we've looked at the sources of global warming, we know where global warming is taking hold, and we've covered some topics that you, that you might need to know at school. And in the, ne and in the next episode, we're going to explore the causes of the ice ages, and, and a process of global warming, global cooling, which links into this episode. So please do watch all three of the episodes. They're planning because if you miss one of them, it won't make sense. So, if you like this video, please do give it a like. Please do share my videos and please do comment on them. Maybe, you know, if there's any if there's any questions or theories you want me to do, because I'm very good at theorizing things. This, please subscribe to my channel so you can see more of this content. And please do ring the bell so you'll be, you can be updated the moment when I release a second episode of this. And in the next episode, we're going to get one step closer to the sad truth of global warming, and you'll all be university students. See you next video, comrades. Until then.